You remember me saying something like, do you think Einstein believes in work-life balance in some giant bomb discussion video in which to talk about life balance? Well, it's not even that. It's like the concept of work-life balance assumes that you don't care about work and that work is not an important part of your life, okay? Because it's offsetting work versus life. And okay, if you have a job and you're not that interested in the actual work at the job and you're doing it to earn a living, which is a totally reasonable thing, then that concept makes sense. But if you're fortunate enough to have work that you really care about, then the idea of work-life balance ceases to, as it is popularly explained in current American culture, it really doesn't make sense anymore. And so the, the problem that I have is that people who talk about work-life balance do not bring into the discussion this situation where work is actually good for you and enjoyable, right? And I think that warps the discussion terribly because you cease to see a lot of possibility that is open to you. You saw a tweet of John Carmack once saying he was never forced to work 80 to 90 hours per week. On the other hand, he said that he enjoys working 60 hours minimum because he wants to. Yes, and the thing that I would add as well, and it, I don't like to bring this up in discussions because it's talking about somebody else. And I don't, I don't really know how John C.'s life went, and I can't really say anything about it. But the way I think about it is like, look, he's a very famous programmer known for having accomplished really big stuff. Okay, do you think that he would be the famous John Carmack if during the 1990s he clocked out at 5 p.m. every day and went to the nightclub or like whatever, right? No, he wouldn't be. He wouldn't be the famous John Carmack, not only because he would have only gotten half the stuff done that he did or less than half the stuff done that he did, but because he wouldn't be as good as he is because putting in the hours is how you get good, okay? So like this is also missing from these discussions of work-life balance. Like, okay, let me put it this way. People seem to understand that if you want to be in the Olympics as a, a, an Olympic class, class athlete, you have to train very heavily for many years when you're like a teenager because you have to be young to perform at high levels, right? People understand that, but they somehow don't understand that the same thing is true for other disciplines, right? Look, if you want to be a world-class, if you want to be an Olympic programmer, you have to put in the training. That should be obvious, right? And it's not for some people. I don't know why. Like you can't clock out at five every day and compete in the Olympics. That's not how that works. It's just not. Someone's saying you can like what you do and still want to clock out at five. That's fine. That's totally cool. Like if you enjoy working, you know, nine to five or whatever with a three hour lunch and then, um, and then you got some stuff done that day and then you want to go to the movies or something. That's cool. That's, I'm not objecting to that. I'm just saying that if that's your life choice, just realize you're not going to be one of the best programmers. That's just how it is. And people want to live in this, uh, this wishful thinking reality where like they can work five hours a day and also think they're one of the best programmers in the world. And that's just not how it works. It's not how it works. You think the difference is that nobody should force you to work more than 40 hours a week, but you shouldn't shame people for wanting to work more on their own projects to better themselves either. That is true, right? So again, I'm not justifying like crunch at game companies. I'm not justifying an employer telling you to work over the weekend if you like your job. That's not cool, okay? But these discussions that everybody likes to get mad about on the internet need to acknowledge that some people want to work a lot more than 40 hours a week and those people are going to be the most successful people. That's just how it works because they're going to be a they're going to just get more done. So some people try to make this argument that you get more done at 35 hours than 60 hours. That's nonsense. OK, like. That's true for people who don't care about their jobs. And, uh, you know, just 
need relaxation time or whatever. But if you really care a lot about your job, like if, if you really find it fulfilling, you would get more done at 60 hours than at 30 hours, right? So that's first of all. And secondly, again, the more time you put in, the better you are. And then again, there's the third difference, which is just if you're working for someone else's company, that's not the same as if you're working on your own projects, right? And so I'm not saying that you should work for someone else's company for like 80 hours a week if you want to be the best programmer. You could work for somebody else's company, you know, for, for the regular amount, whatever your regular work week is, part-time, full-time, whatever, and then go home and put the rest of the hours into your own thing. That's totally reasonable. I'm just saying that don't don't be too seduced by this rhetoric that everybody in the world should work a 30 hour week or whatever because first of all it's not realistic because the people who don't do that are going to out compete you right secondly it's not realistic because it ignores the fact that a lot of people get meaning in life through work okay and if you deny them that they should be working you're denying them a significant portion of the meaning in their life so all of that should be part of the discussion and it generally isn't because the internet is stupid. Do I ever find working long hours negatively impacts my physical health? Uh, not usually. Um, do I stay physically active? Yeah, I know. Maybe not as much as I used to and not as much as I maybe should, but in general, I'm fine. If you work 60 hours, you can't keep up with more than 20 hours next week. I don't think that's actually true. I think that's only true if you are burned out and don't enjoy what you're doing. Working 12 hours a day with any job or task is exhausting though. Well, um, yeah, it is a little bit. It is a little bit. And then you catch up after several days and just work eight or nine hours that day and sleep extra. How does time investment correlate with burnout? Um, I think that's an individual thing. Burnout is not just about time investment. It's about whether you succeeded or failed at what you were doing and whether what you were doing was worth the time investment. And that depends on individual cases. If you do what you love, you never get tired and only sleep because it's fun. I don't agree with that. You get tired. If you're using your brain really hard for many hours, that's actually tiring but you don't get tired in the way of like i just don't want to do this anymore you're just like oh man i want to keep working on this but i can't think very clearly right now so i'm going to go rest if you've never had if let me put it this way if you don't frequently end up in that mental state that i just described of wow i want to keep doing this but my brain is just too tired right now then you're not actually working at the productivity level that you could, which may be fine if you don't want to be productive. You think it's a lot about the working environment too. If you hate all your coworkers, you will be less productive. Well, that's probably true. Probably true. Some people probably get that tired in six hours. Others could go for 12 hours or even more. There is definitely a variation. That is true. There's definitely a variation, but the part that is missing from the discussion again, well, the part that's not, so, so people use that variation as an excuse. Like, oh, some people get tired after six hours and that's just me, so I'm only gonna work six hours. It's like, no, that's just you not wanting to work more than six hours, right? That, which is, again, fine, but you're just not gonna be an Olympic athlete if you work for six hours, okay? Um, and just accept that, right? The thing that's missing from the discussion is, hey, Maybe if you get tired after six hours, that's something you could train yourself up so that you only get tired after 10 hours later after a lot of training or whatever, right? Like this idea that you could build the muscle or improve your competence at ability to be productive is, is missing. I, I guess it's present, but only in the, the stupid, uh, um, cheap trick kind of way. Like, again, there's all sorts of like, oh, you know, set, set a timer every 15 minutes and take a 30 second break or whatever the fuck, all these stupid things that people come up with, or, um, just like, you know, use spaced repetition to like memorize things. And then, 
you'll be able to program faster, like whatever. Those things don't make any sense usually. And they're just excuses. Like just train your muscles, <laughs> train your brain muscles and your psychological muscles to like do the job better. <laughs> Just sit your butt in the chair and get better at doing the job, right? And, and nobody wants to hear that because that's actual work. They want to hear the get rich quick schemes of how to work better. And the get rich quick schemes are not just as they always don't. They're not the way to go in this case. All right. Okay. I'm going to stop ranting about this topic because it's too much. Your greatest weakness in programming is procrastinating when you should just break through the wall with your head. You know exactly what to do, but doing it would be uncomfortable. Yeah, that's a skill. <laughs> just knowing that you need to do that and just barreling forward and doing it is an actual job skill that you get better at, right? So like, okay, again, analogizing to other jobs. Do you think that a UFC fighter is comfortable getting punched in the head when he's in the octagon fighting somebody else. No, <laughs> no. So comfort is not an excuse, right? That guy's just like, look, this is the profession I picked. I've got to win this fight against this other guy. It's going to involve getting punched a little bit. We're going to go get punched and we're just going to try to punch more than we get punched, right? That's your job sometimes. And, uh, the better you are at that, the better you are at it. You don't want that. That's not how you imagine life. I'm not sure what you referred to, but that's fine. Like, look, I'm not saying everybody should work really hard. I'm just saying acknowledge your life choice that you made, right? So if you don't want to work very hard and somebody else does want to work very hard, don't be surprised when A, they make a lot more money than you and B, they're better at their job than you after five or 10 years because they work so much more at it. Like those are the natural consequences, right? So when people go then complain that some people have more money than other people, it's like, well, that person fricking worked five times as much as you. If you actually honestly look at the hours, what do you expect them to have? And why wouldn't they have five times more money than you if they worked five times as hard? Why wouldn't they at least have five? Cause it's actually everything's super linear, right? So somebody works five times as hard, you would expect them to have more than that much success, whether you're talking about money or skills or whatever. Okay. Now there are trade-offs. The person who doesn't work five times as hard might like have more romantic relationships or travel more and see more places in the world, whatever. That's all true. So I'm not saying that one of these choices is correct. I'm simply saying, be realistic about the choice that you're making and accept the consequences of the choice, right? If you don't like the consequences, then make a different choice. But if you want to make that choice, if you're like, look, I want to have lots of romantic relationships. I want to travel around the world. Uh, you know, I want to see a lot of movies. I want to listen to symphonies. And so I'm only going to work six hours a week or six, I don't know, whatever, pick a realistic number, 10, 20 hours a week on average and take lots of weeks off. That's totally fine. Dude, I have no problem with that. Enjoy your life. Totally cool. That's great. If that's, if that's what you want your life to be awesome. I'm just saying <laughs> don't do that and expect to be on the same level as somebody who works 80 hours a week programming. That's just not going to happen. And people just don't, people don't want to see that whole picture. They want to say, look, I want to have my vacation life and I want there to be no negative trade-offs. And it's look, 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 everything is opportunity cost. There's positive trade-offs, there's negative trade-offs. And that's just the reality. So, okay, I'm going to stop ranting. I've said the same thing like 10 times. Work-life balance can't be overstated. I don't agree. Um, again, great figures from history would not have known what you mean by work-life balance usually. <laughs> like work-life balance is a very new concept 
manufactured by a luxury oriented society through almost none of human history. Did anyone have any idea of work life balance? Okay. That's a new idea. So you have to contextualize it for what it is. And just understand that it's a new idea made up by people recently. And then just whatever, whatever then you think about it is fine. But like, don't pretend it's like some human universal. Like, I bet, let's even do a Google trend search on this, right? Let's, let's have fun with this. I don't, I don't do enough Google trend searches. Work life balance. No, oh, it's actually mentioned in 2004. I, what's the one that lets you search in books and stuff? Cause that's what we actually want. We don't just want like web search. Cause I guess that's why it only goes back to 2004. Is there a way to like go back to 1900 or something? Office work is something new. That's true. Yeah. Most office jobs are bullshit, which is what's different. Google Ngram search. I'm actually curious about when this work life balance, when did this originate? So like you could imagine that people used a different phrase for this, but like, okay, this idea happened in 1990. There's a tiny, tiny bump during world war two when people actually worked hard. Um, and that's it. So for all, and this only goes back to 1800. All right. Imagine you expanded this back to like 30,000 BC. Okay. You go from 30,000 BC up to here. And this thing is only a thing for there. Could this not be progress? I don't, I don't feel like it is, but you know, again, think of it. How you will, if you like the idea of work like life balance, that's great. Just understand it's a new idea that people just made up 30 years ago and that wasn't even popular until like 15 years ago, right? You've seen arguments that people used to work only three days a week. I don't believe those arguments. There's a very obvious reason why they're not true, which is that if you're a tribe somewhere working three days a week, and somebody else is a tribe working six days a week, they're going to kick your ass and take everything you own. And that has happened throughout human history, right? Um, if you mean by centuries ago, if you mean like during the middle ages, that's definitely not true. Historically, medieval peasants worked a lot of hours a day, but only worked 250 days a year. Um, I don't think I believe that again. Um, I mean, I believe that you read that somewhere, but, I have seen a lot of, a lot of recent history seems to be very revisionist or very based on wish, wishful thinking without, um, without being sufficiently vigilant that they're not just like making stuff up. Right. So, uh, I, I would really have to research that before I really believed it. Yeah. Let's graph this against imposter syndrome, right? Oh, that started a little later. Yeah, it basically started ramping up around the same time. It's just not as popular of a trend. No real evidence. I'm not saying there's evidence that these are related. I'm just saying it's funny that they seem to come out of about the same cultural trend. I'm not writing a research paper that imposter syndrome and work-life balance are related. Holy crap. This is exactly why I like the sub-only streams, honestly. Imposter syndrome started whenever society started gravitating toward bullshit, low value providing jobs. I think that's a little bit true, but there's a, there's a flip side of the coin, which is the flip side is something about just not valuing expertise or like just thinking we can hire people into whatever position and they should do a good job or whatever. Right. 